An F-35 might be better positioned to respond quickly to enemy force movement. In the event that enemy air threats emerge in a firefight, an F-35 could address them in a way an A-10 could not. Obviously, an F-35 would be much better positioned to locate enemy long-range fires points of combat significance and destroy hostile artillery, mortar or long-range fires launching points. The U.S. Army wants the F-35 to support its ground troops. The Army think the 5th Gen Stealth Fighter would bring substantial value to targeting and attacking enemy ground forces in close proximity to advancing infantry. What kind of close air support could it bring to high-risk, high-casualty ground war? When you are in a firefight, the first thing infantry wants to do is get on the radio to adjust fire for mortars and locate targets with close air support with planes or helicopters. You want fires. The F-35 has increased survivability and it will play a decisive role in the support of ground combat, Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley told reporters at the Association of the United States Army Annual Symposium. General Milley's comments are quite significant, given the historic value of close air support when it comes to ground war. His remarks also bear great relevance regarding the ongoing Pentagon evaluation assessing the F-35 and A-10 Warthog in close air support scenarios. Over the years, close air support to Army ground war has of course often made the difference between life and death, victory or defeat. The Army, Milley said, wants next generation close air support for potential future warfare. While that, Milley of course did not specifically compare the A-10 to the F-35 or say the Army prefers one aircraft over another, he did say the F-35 would be of great value in a high stakes force-on-force -force ground war. Long revered by ground troops as a flying tank, the combat-proven A-10 has been indispensable to ground war victory. Its titanium hull, 30mm cannon, durability, built-in redundancy and weapons range has enabled the aircraft to sustain large amounts of small arms fire and combat damage, and keep flying. At the same time, as newer threats emerge in the high-tech F-35 matures into combat, Many US military weapons developers and combatant commanders believe the JSF can bring an improved, new generation of CAS support to ground troops. Thus, the ongoing Office of the Secretary of Defense comparison. Accordingly, the Pentagon-led F-35-8 10 assessment is nearing its next phase of evaluation, following an initial first wave of tests in July of this year, Vice ADM Matt Winter. Program Executive Officer, F-35 Program, recently told a group of reporters. Upon initial examination, some might regard a stealthy, 5th Gen F-35 as early quip or at least not suited for close air support. However, a closer look does seem to uncover a handful of advantages, speaking to the point Milley mentioned about survivability. Long range, computer-enabled F-35 sensors could enable the aircraft to see and destroy enemy ground targets with precision from much higher altitudes and much farther ranges than an A-10 could. The speed of an F-35, when compared to an A-10, would potentially make it better able to maneuver, elude enemy fire and get into position for attack. Like the A-10's 30mm gun, the F-35 has its own 25mm cannon mounted on its left wing which could attack ground forces. Given its sensor configuration, with things like a 360-degree distributed aperture system with cameras, the F-35 brings a drone-like ISR component to air ground war. This could help targeting, terrain analysis and much-needed precision attacks as a soldier's fight up close with maneuvering enemy ground forces. An F-35 might be better positioned to respond quickly to enemy force movement, in the event that enemy air threats emerge in a firefight, an F-35 could address them in a way an A-10 could not. Obviously, an F-35 would be much better positioned to locate enemy long-range fires points of combat significance and destroy hostile artillery, mortar or long-range fires launching points. Finally, while the A-10 has a surprising white envelope of weapons, an F-35 could travel with a wider range of air ground attack weapons, armed with advanced targeting technology. An F-35 might be better positioned to respond quickly to enemy force movement, in the event that enemy air threats emerge in a firefight, an F-35 could address them in a way an A-10 could not. Obviously, 
an F-35 would be much better positioned to locate enemy long-range fires points of combat significance and destroy hostile artillery, mortar or long-range fires launching points fighter jet close air support is by no means unprecedented. F-22s were used against ISIS, F-15s were used against insurgents in Iraq, and the F-35 recently had its combat debut in Afghanistan. There are, however, some unknowns likely to be informing the current analysis. How much small arms fire could an F-35 withstand? Could it draw upon its hovering technology to loiter near high-value target areas? To what extent could it keep flying in the event that major components, such as engines or fuselage components, were destroyed in war? How much could A-10 weapons and targeting technology be upgraded? Regardless of the conclusions arrived upon by the ongoing assessment, it is likely both the A-10 and F-35 will perform CAS missions in the immediate years ahead. When it comes to the Army and the F-35, one can clearly envision warfare scenarios wherein Army soldiers could be supported by the Marine Corps F-35B, Navy F-35C or Air Force F-35A. We don't fight as an Army, we fight as a joint force. What makes us different is the synergistic effect we get from combining various forces in time and space, Millie said.